So in this tutorial, we are going to study about flip-flops, which is a part of sequential circuits, which we have covered in the previous tutorial. And you can see that in our playlist. So basically flip-flops are the memory element inside our sequential circuits. And we know that sequential circuits contain the combinational circuits and some memory element or the storage element. So basically, uh, flip-flop is a circuit which is used to store one bit of information. So I'm going to write here stores one bit of information. All right, so we are going to study about flip-flops in this tutorial and this tutorial is helpful for computer science students as well as uh, students who are studying uh, digital electronics right so flip-flops are basically uh, the storage elements or the memory elements and they basically store only one bit of information so this one bit of information means that a flip-flop can store either zero or one so basically flip-flop does not store this information or you can say this bit permanently it stores uh, temporarily and uh, this basically means that uh, it will store this one bit of information only uh, if this uh, the circuit is being connected to the electricity so if the current is passing through the circuit uh, then only the flip-flop will store one bit of information and sometimes storing one bit of information is also called maintaining a state of uh, zero or one so there are various types of flip-flops available sr flip-flop uh, jk flip-flop and these all of these uh, differ in how uh, these flip-flops stores one bit of information so particularly in this tutorial we are going to study about the sr flip-flop so to understand the very basic meaning of flip-flop uh, i will give you a very good example so let's suppose uh, you have a chocolate box so uh, if you have a chocolate box and there is a child who wish to take some chocolates from this box so let's suppose there is a child here so in order to take chocolates from this box he will have to flip its cover and then he will take out some chocolates from it and if he want uh, to uh, just store some chocolates inside this box he will flop the cover so our flip-flop uh, also acts same uh, it stores one bit of information when a signal is passed to uh, is passed to them so uh, this is basically done using a clock so you can see that uh, in the graphic symbol of the SR flip-flop, this one is the S signal, as you can see here. This one is the R signal. And SR basically means set and reset. And we will also see what this means. What is the meaning of set and reset in the SR flip-flop? We will also understand that. But this is the basic graphical uh, symbol. So S and R, are the set and reset signals and C is the clock and basically clock is a signal that uh, specifies or you can say it signals the flip-flop to open this uh, to actually uh, may, uh, be able to store some bits right so if uh, let's suppose this is a chocolate box and the child wants to enter some chocolates in it then he will have to flip the cover so in that case uh, we are going to make use of, of a clock so if the clock signal will transition from zero to one which basically means a low voltage to the high voltage when uh, the clock will transition from low voltage to the high voltage then it signals the flip-flop that now you can change the data inside the flip-flop so uh, let's see the uh, the truth table uh, or the characteristic table for the uh, SR flip-flop. 
So SR flip-flop uh, is basically a set and reset flip-flop. So S stands for set and R stands for reset. And R stands for reset. So basically when the value of uh, you can see that here I have written all the possible combinations of S and R signals 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1. So basically QT plus 1 represents uh, the uh, state Q represents the state of the flip flop and state basically means uh, what the flip-flop is actually storing inside it so if the flip-flop is maintaining a state of one that means that the flip-flop is storing one so q t plus one means that uh, this will be the state of flip-flop after some time t plus one which means that uh, there is a transition so if the clock will signal that now uh, you will have uh, if it signals the flip-flop to change the data then we call it as a QT plus 1 which is the transition so QT plus 1 is the transition stage and transition basically means the transition of clock from 0 to 1 so now you can see here that when the set and reset both are having the value 0 then uh, th this means that you are not providing any voltage to the to the SR flip-flop thus it will be equal to the Q of T and Q of T basically represents the state of the flip-flop when there is no clock transition so basically Q of T means the state of flip-flop state of flip-flop I'm going to write here FF so state of flip-flop when there is no transition and here transition basically means that the clock is not uh, passing the uh, signal from 0 to 1 so the transition is not uh, occurring here 0 to 1 and if the S and R both uh, are having the inputs as zero or low voltages then this means that our flip-flop will have no change you can see here I have written no change here and no change means that the state of the flip-flop will remain same and it will remain same when the state when there was no transition occurring and we will understand this whole concept when we will move to this circuit diagram and the table you will be able to understand why the flip-flop stores or how the flip-flop is able to maintain a state of 0 and 1 even if uh, no inputs is provided in it right so if the S and R inputs are even 0 then we will be able to see that the SR flip-flop can actually store uh, one bit of information and that logic lies in this circuit diagram which is helpful for the electronic student but in computer science uh, you are just only concerned with this graphic symbol the characteristic table and the excitation table right so uh, SR flip-flop is uh, basically when it has a clock uh, we call it as a SR flip-flop and when there is no clock you can see here there is no clock provided so this is known as SR latch so I'm going to write here SR latch LATCH. All right, so let's uh, move to this characteristic table now. So when the value of S is zero and R is equals to one, that means that we want to reset the contents of the flip-flop. So if the flip-flop is having any contents and we know that it can only store zero and one, so if the value uh, or if the state of the flip-flop is 1 or 0 it will just clear it to 0 and that's the very basic meaning of reset we are resetting the value of the flip-flop to 0 so when we are going to supply 
set uh, the input set as 1 and when we will supply 0 as an input to the R so this means that we want to set the flip-flop to 1 so that's why I have written set to 1 so this is the characteristic table for specifically for SR flip-flop and we will study uh, more about more flip-flops like JK flip-flop D flip-flop and we will study their characteristic table also so here you can see that in this one in this case when both s and r is equals to 1 then this condition is indeterminate uh, indeterminate uh, and the reason is because uh, at the same time you cannot uh, reset the value of the flip-flop to 0 and 1 and set it to 1 right so setting and resetting at the same time cannot happen as you can see here so this is the uh, SR flip-flop here I have just given the excitation table excitation table is very simple it just uh, represents uh, the inputs of the S and R when there is uh, no transition here there is no clock transition and this is after the clock transition so after the clock transitions or you can say that after the clock uh, signals from 0 to 1 then we are going to see how the outputs are changed so let's see this first case so you can see here when uh, uh, the state uh, the initial state of the flip-flop is 0 and the after uh, after excitation or you can say after transition of the clock it is again 0 that means that the value of the s will obviously be zero because the trans because we have not reset the flip flop. Uh, so you can see that even after the clock transition happens, there is no change in the state of flip flop, and we know that uh, the flip flop will change its state only when clock transitions from zero to one. So that's the very uh, basic concept. Right, so whenever the uh, clock signal will transition from 0 to 1, we will just write it as the state of flip flop will be QT plus 1. So in this case, you can see that the QT is represented as 0 and QT plus 1 is also 0. That means that initial state of the flip flop was 0 and even after this, uh, the clock transition, the uh, the state of the flip-flop has not changed it is the same and we know that uh, this is uh, R will be indeterminate that's why I have represented it with the cross so uh, if it will be 0 set is 0 you can see from this table if set is 0 then uh, the reset value will be uh, cannot we cannot determine it because it is not uh, because the state has not changed here as you can see here that this is QT is 0 and QT plus 1 is also 0 so let's move to this next case you can see the uh, state of QT initially was 0 and after excitation after the clock transition it has changed to 1 so we know that this is the case of set equals to 1 and reset equals to 0 so you can see here this is 0 and this is 1 and you can see this from our characteristic table that when set is 1 and reset is 0 then then this means that uh, the state of the flip-flop has changed from 0 to 1 in the next case you can see that the value of s is equals to 0 and the value of r is equals to 1 so you can see that uh, the state the initial state was equal to 1 so when the clock transition does not happen the state of the flip-flop was 1 uh, this may have caused because uh, the previous signals provide or the previous input signals provided to this um, flip-flop uh, will be s equals to 1 and r equals to 0 that's why uh, they have changed the state of the flip-flop so next time when you will provide the set as 0 and reset as 1 so this one 
basically means that now the state of the flip-flop is 1. So when the state of the flip-flop is 1 and the clock transitions from 0 to 1, you can see that it has changed to 0. So this happens only when you are clearing uh, the state of the flip-flop to 0. So this is the case when we are using 0, 1. So the value of set should be 0 and reset should be 1. As you can see here, this one is our case. Right, so in the next case, you can see that the initial state of the flip-flop was 1. And even after the transition, it is still 1. In that case, we know that uh, the reset value will be 0 and you cannot determine the value of S from here. So this is the basic uh, exciting tab uh, excitation table, characteristic table and a graphic symbol of how uh, the values of set and reset uh, impacts the current state of the flip-flop and the state of the flip-flop after the clock signal uh, makes a transition from 0 to 1. But, the, but our question uh, is uh, still unanswered. Our question was how flip-flop was able to store one bit of information. So we are going to see that using this uh, SR latch, which is basically uh, the implementation of SR flip-flop. It just lacks the clock signal. So if you will provide clock signals to this SR latch, it will become a SR flip-flop. So this is the basic working behind the SR flip-flop and we are going to use the NOR gate. We are going to use NOR gates to implement this SR latch. Right, so you can see that these two are the NOR gates. So now what we are going to do is uh, we will have to just draw, we will have to write the truth table of the NOR gate. You can see that A and B are the input values. So if A is 0 and B is 0, then we are going to apply the NOR gate and we, we have already seen how to apply this NOR gate. So I've just, uh, I've just written this whole truth table for the NOR gate, right? So what we are going to do is we are going to just uh, input some values of S and R and then we will see the value of Q and Q complement. So Q basically is the transition is the state uh, is the current state of the flip-flop which is QT and Q complement is so Q complement is basically the, uh, the complement of the state of the flip-flop so let's uh, let's put some in input value so let's start with 0 comma 1 right so initially set will be 0 and reset will be 1 So when we have provided set as 0 and reset as 1, you can see that uh, when 1 goes here in the NOR gate, you can see that the first input is 1. So when you, you will supply 1 to the, this NOR gate, the second input does not matter. You can see that if the second input will be 0 or 1, it does not matter. Our output will be 0. Right. So the uh, this input can be 1 or 0 it does not matter so the value of q will be equal to 0 and we have uh, used the nor gate implementation of the of the sr uh, latch you can even use the nand gate so from the truth table we have seen that uh, if one value uh, if one input is having the input signal 1 then the second input signal does not matter the output will be 0 so the value of q will be 0 so this value of uh, q will be supplied from here you can see that it will be supplied to this s signal so our q will be equal to 0 so 0 and 0 are the two input signals and we know that a and b are two input signals so 0 and 0 will give us 1. So Q complement is 1. So this means that if I have a SR flip-flop and I will provide uh, the value of set as 0 and reset as 1, 
then the value of q will be 0 and q complement will be 1. So this means that the state of the flip-flop will be 0. Right. So if we want, uh, if we say that we are storing one bit of information and for this specific case where we are taking s as 0 and r as 1, we know that we will have to store 0 in the flip-flop. So even if you change, uh, you uh, just drop the values of s and r to 0 and 0. So if there are no inputs, so if you will provide uh, no voltage to the flip-flop, it will maintain its state. That's the very basic meaning of the flip-flop. It stores one bit of information. That means it maintains its state of 0 or 1, even if the input values are 0. So that's the main reason why we have written this condition here. So the value of S and R, if they are 0, then this means that there will be no change in the excitation in the excitation state. So even if the clock transitions from 0 to 1, the value of S and R, since they are 0 and 0, they will not impact the flip-flop states. So the state of the flip-flop remains changed. So let's see from this circuit diagram that uh, we know that uh, when we were supplying S and R as 0 and 1, the value or the state of the flip-flop was 0. So let's now change the value to 0 and 0 and let's see whether the state of the flip-flop which is 0 is changing or not. Right, so when we provide 0 here, you can see that a 1 goes here. So these both are 0, so this value 1 will go here. And from this part, you can see that from this signal, from the circuit diagram, you can see that 1 will go from here to this place. So in this case, it will be 1. So what will happen when we have 0 and 1 as the input signals? You can see that uh, in these two cases, we have 0 and 1 as the input signals. So 0, 1 and 1, 0 both will give us the output as 0. So you can see that even if the, if you even if you change the values of the S and R in the next clock transition, if you will just reset them to 0, it will not impact the state of the flip-flop. Initially, it was 0 when you were supplying 0 and 1. So if you will just clear the values to 0, 0, you can see that 1 will go from here and 0, 1 will give us output as 0. So Q will also remain 0. So that's how uh, the SR latch or the SR flip-flop maintains the state of a particular state. So this was basically our case 1. So in case 1, we have studied when S and R is 1, uh, sorry, 0 and 1. Then the state, we, we have seen how the state of this flip-flop has changed. So now what I'm just going to do is uh, we are going to pick up our next case. So our next case is when the value of s is equals to 1 and value of r is equals to 0. So let's say at some time t, at some time t, which is the initial time, we supply the value of s as 1 and value of r as 0. So this time t is the time when there is no clock transition happening. We are just providing these two inputs to the flip-flop. So when uh, you can see that uh, it is 0 comma 1. So now we can see that when uh, the first input is 0, sorry 1, when the s is 1, we know that in this case, if s is 1, it does not matter what the second output is. So even if the second, sorry, even if the second input is 1 or 0, it does not matter. Our output will always be 0. So Q complement value will be equal to 0. Like this, right? So now 0 will go from here and it will be, it will act as an input in for this NOR gate. So now we're going to provide 0 comma 0 to this NOR gate. And we know when we provide 0, 0, the output is equal to 1. 
so clearly uh, we have we can see that now the value of q will be equal to 1 right so uh, this circuit and this truth table and all the explanation uh, that i am giving you using these cases are just to understand the basic uh, implementation of flip-flop because if you will not understand uh, this circuit diagram or truth table uh, you will have to just uh, memorize these characteristic table and excitation table and so you will never be able to understand the underlying concept that's why we are discussing the SR latch here with the truth table right so now we have seen that at some time t when we provide the set as 1 and reset as 0 the value of q has become equal to 1 so that means that at some time t now the state of the flip-flop has become equal to 1 so now when uh, uh, this uh, the state of the flip-flop has changed to 1 now let's say the clock transition happens so the clock signal says that uh, now I'm going to give you a high voltage so a high voltage which is 1 is provided to this SR latch so what happens is uh, we will have to now see whether the flip-flop the state of the flip-flop will change if the S and R are clear to 0 right we know that uh, if there are no inputs that are provided to this SR latch then there will be no change and we know that the state of the flip-flop will only change when the clock transition happens so let's say that at some time t at some time t clock has transitioned from 0 to 1 so at some time t the clock has uh, uh, just changed the value uh, has transitioned from 0 to 1 and at that time the values of S and R were uh, 1 and 0 so now after the clock transition now the excitation state is over so now at some time uh, some time t plus 1 or we say this time as the time after the excitation has been over so now the values of S and R are reset to 0 because we know that the values of flip-flop cannot change if the clock is not transitioning from 0 to 1. So that's why we are making it to 0. So we know that at time t the state of the flip-flop was equal to 1. So now what we are going to do is we are going to clear it to 0. So let's see uh, after clearing it to 0 whether this output or whether the state of this SR latch will be will remain same or not so when uh, we are providing 0 and 0 you can see here so in this case let me just remove all of these and let's make it to so this s will be equal to 0 and this r will be equal to 0 now so the value of q was equal to 1 in our, uh, we, and we have seen that uh, at some time t we have already obtained q as 1 so now we have cleared s and r after the transitioning the value of s and r are set to 0 comma 0 so 1 will go from here you can see that 1 will go from here to this nor gate and this will turn out 0 comma 1 so when this will be 0 comma 1 you can see that uh, this will be our case if any of the uh, inputs is 0 we get the output as 0 so the value that we get from this nor gate is 0 so q naught will also be equal to 0 so now 0 will go from here from this position from this position and 0 is supplied to this value so now the value of reset was uh, 0 and this is the second input is also 0 so from this you can see that uh, the output will we will get is 1 so you can see that now q will also be equal to 1 so even after the clock transition has happened and we have cleared the out uh, the input values of s and r we have changed it to 0 
the flip flop has maintained its state of one in this second case. So if you take uh, the example of if you take this case when S and R equal to one, you will be able to see that uh, there is uh, the condition will be indeterminate and uh, that's the main reason why we do not provide S and R as one as an input. So this is a basic tutorial of a flip flop where we have seen how flip flop maintains a, uh, uh, one some state of zero and one using this SR latch and we have seen how this uh, latch is constructed using the NOR gates and using the truth table and the characteristic table we have seen uh, the different cases of the SR, SR flip flop. So that's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial we are going to discuss some more types of flip flop and basically flip flops are the basic building flop fl uh, basic building block of the uh, registers. So it's a very important tutorial. So make sure to like this video and subscribe our channel to stay notified for the upcoming tutorials. So thanks for watching.